Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. What the hell is this mess? More work than I anticipated. But, that's okay. I'm going to do a mod on the travel trailer, actually an add-on. So, by the time you account for my bike, my wife's bike, two kids' bikes, you're either going to put them in the bed of the pickup, or on this fold-down back rack. But I like to put the generator, firewood, and the gray water tank, if I need it, is always there. So I don't want to fill that up. So what I bought was this bike rack system from a company in Canada, Arvika. It's not cheap, but the exchange rate helps. Basically, it's going to take that four rail rack, I know it doesn't look like it yet, but when I get it on there it will going to look like that and it's going to mount it to the tongue above the propane tanks and if I do this right rumor has it I can get it high enough to still get the bottle cover off with the thing in place so basically those posts need to go right behind the sway bar or the lift bar brackets they'll go up and do I still have one down here? Yes. So these swivel. And that'll get you so that you're not too close to the skin of the trailer, not too far. And by getting it up that high, I'm hoping I can avoid tight turn situations where a bike can smack the back of the truck. But Forest River, who makes the Salem Cruise Light and a ton of others that look just like this, they take some shortcuts. I mean, let's be real. They're not a luxury brand. So they do some things. They do some things like this. They mount this battery box way far forward. Just two chunks of angle iron welded to some square tubing and welded up. No big deal. Well, why the hell isn't it back there? Because when they put it up here and give you these ridiculously long bolts, you can't fit two batteries there. Now I could put two small batteries up here, but of course when they sold it to me with that one, what is it, a group 24 or 27, I don't remember. They said, oh, that's as good as two small, well, bullshit. Any of you guys that have dry camp know that it's not that, it's not as good. So naturally where I need to mount those posts for that bike rack is right here. Well, I'm not gonna mount over the top of that. I was pissed about this anyway. This is the motivation to make it right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut those welds, just scrap this, there's nothing there that can be reused. Maybe I could use a chunk of the angle iron, but in reality, I've got enough in that stick. I'm gonna be able to do it over. I'll reuse the square tubing most likely and just shift it back and I've got a piece of expanded metal sitting up there against the garage that'll put an actual tray in it so that if I want to put like the lift bar bracket, you know, tool in there and leave it, it'll be fine. So anyway, if you've been looking at one of those bike systems and you're wondering if it'll fit your cruise light or other Forest River product right out of the box, if it's set up like mine, the answer is no. But I'm going to document this along the way. And for starters, I need to cut that old battery box out of there.
Okay, so I ran out of daylight last night, but pretty much yesterday all I was able to achieve was moving this battery support back. And from the rust marks, you can see I gained somewhere around eight, eight and a half inches. And so I basically salvaged a square tube, used my own damn oh, angle iron I had on hand, brought it back as far as I could, and still give me about 10 inches of clearance to the wall here. The way this thing slopes, it's great for conserving space and headroom and all that, but it's terrible for trying to mount battery boxes. That's why they had them so damn far forward. Even with a back like this, those brackets for the, the bike rack are going to end up coming right over the top here. And I'm okay with that, because between the square tubing, even though that's not thick wall, that angle iron is strong enough. It, I'm comfortable it's not going anywhere. And as is typical with any job I weld, the very last bead is always the best. I don't do this enough, so by the time I get back into it and get everything figured out again, usually the project's done. Like I said, I'm going to put some expanded metal in there, just create a tray, rather than just a wide open drop. I'm going to tack weld that down in a few spots. I hate that expanded metal rattle. Every time you hit a speed bump, ka-clang, ka-clang, I'm not going to listen to that. But if I calculated this right, I won't get two Group 27s in there. At least I sure don't think so. But Group uh, Group 24 should just slip right in. Okay. So remember, this whole thing started out as being a bike rack kit. And of course, we know that it morphed into a hell of a lot more than that. batteries have been successfully moved back. Primer, paint, clear. Back to this bike rack. These instructions, even though they're part French because it's from Canada, I've seen instructions from China that are better. It looks like a good product, but it leaves a lot to the imagination. So I've got it started. This piece folds up. Those are the, that's the upright right there, that piece. This would actually fold up in the event that I can't set this up. If I can't set it up to clear the propane tank cover, folding this up is what, uh, what would access that. So I know it's a lot to look at, but you're gonna get in the big box, you'll get this piece folded up, and that's about it. That box is your rails. Now, these are like some running boards. They have a groove that captures a carriage bolt right there. So the innermost uses the short carriage bolt, because it just goes through that uh, piece that's built into the hinge. The next two rails use the longer two inch bolts. And the instructions, I'm not clear on whether this should be on the inside or out. I'm doing it on the out because there's a reinf kind of a nub here the washer can sit against. And the other side is more recessed. It's almost like it's for a different application. It would hold a nut. So I'm more comfortable when this clamps down that it's gonna be right like this. If I'm wrong, well, you guys will know about it. The tire stops only go on this out, outside rail, so this would be closest to your tailgate, you know, your pickup, the tongue of your trailer. And again, they get a bolt through the top of the bracket, which then slides in here. So you got to get all this stuff set before you put these end caps on. You can get them back off. I screwed up once. And it didn't booger it up too bad, but you don't want to do that too many times. So, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm down to the next step, getting these 
these are your retainer clamps on and I wanted to show you guys this the instructions I'm not going to be able to set this anywhere that I can actually see what I'm doing so bear with me folks the instructions don't tell you much unfortunately out of my element here on the workbench I've got this come on why is that tilt not working what the, oh I've got the camera on the tripod backwards duh maybe I can put on a bike rack but I can't assemble the camera properly there we go all else fails figure out why you're a DA okay so these things the instruction says install bikes by size smallest one on the inside and biggest one on the outside install bikes facing opposite direction blah 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 well how in the hell for installation, unscrew the handle and remove the rod, place the half moon on the horizontal part of the arch or on the vertical part if it is not possible. What the hell does that mean? I mean seriously. There's a picture of allegedly what it's going to look like, which gives me an idea of what we need to do but this is how it's going to come out of the package. Now this is the outer one, the, la the longest, that has the built-in lock. Which that feature is kind of cool. Hopefully I had that in a frame. It's hard to do this. And, uh. Anyway, that's how it comes. And you can see there's a nut lock tied on there. How the hell are you supposed to get that half moon on there? Well, they were literally telling you. Unfortunately. You gotta unscrew this rod all the way and get it out of the half moon, put it on, and then put this back on. So you'll have your knob, a wear washer, there's a spring in here. The rod will come out of the tube. Since there's a pea, you know, a piece of plastic here, it ought to be pretty easy to keep that straight. But then you gotta pop this out. And if you're getting the idea that that doesn't necessarily want to come out, you'd be right. Now, I don't want to jack this up. I need those threads to be good. So I may have to... There we go. It's a little bit of a bind. I would assume... Yeah, there we go. So now... I can slip this over that back bar and I'm going to want it up like this and reassemble all of that. So for the three or four if you're doing the four like I am that is the process to get those retainer clamps on. We'll see what comes next. Man, this doesn't make any sense. Well, it does make sense up to a point I know what it's supposed to look like so you can see I've got two hanging I left the short one off because I don't know in all honesty where I'm gonna want to install it and what I mean by that is I may install it to one of the vertical posts instead of a horizontal up top because the very back will be one of the kids bikes and it may make more sense to come off of there I've just got to test fit it. So I'm going to leave that off. But I'm working on bracket number four. And that will actually go on the back side. So there's the instructions that come with it. Thank God I know what it's supposed to look like. And I think I can make sense of this. I think I have. So everything's going to come in the package together this is an extra kit so that's why there's instructions for everything 
because each thing is considered a kit. At least those, we don't have to take anything apart this time. Alright, now that wants to go... Yeah. Okay. So I'm putting the nub end facing in. I think... I think that's what I want, well, it wasn't. Again, the instructions are extraordinarily unclear. God. Yes, because those brackets need to be bolted from the outside, according to the instructions. So that'll make sense. We'll go carriage bolt, washer, no. And it also looks like there's some caps included here. this video will ever buy one of these racks. But I think this will help if you ever do. You can watch the stuff online. Alright, there's a missing washer. One thing I've noted is these damn kits, the hardware bags tend to rip so you got to check all your boxes very carefully. You're probably going to find a washer or three that have come loose. Or more. Shipping was faster than fast. It shipped out of Canada on Tuesday. And I had it here Friday. That I cannot complain about at all. With all the shipping delays in the world, how am I? hell that happened, I'll never know. But Canada to Oregon, three days? I'll take that. Okay. You guys probably kind of get the picture. I can't make these tight enough with those nylocks locks to make them stay in place. But now I've got another rail assembly that goes back there. Then I will slip bolts into this track and it'll bolt on like that. And again, I don't want to tighten all that down until I've got this thing on the trailer and uh, I can get the height where it needs to be so the bike doesn't hit the front of the trailer. Okay. So again, instructions leave quite a bit to be desired, but that's where those uprights are gonna go. They've got threaded stops here, one back here, one here. In the end, when I get this set up the way I wanted, I may drill that all the way through, put another carriage bolt on, and just clamp that some bitch good and tight. We'll see. I'm not positive yet. But your curved pieces of pipe go in here, and you adjust those side to side so that you get 24 inches center to center. That's what those mounting points are going to be. It'll come with carriage bolts already in here. You just take those out. And those mounting points are these lower ones right here. So you go carriage bolt, flat washer, pipe, flat washer, flat washer, nut. In that order. So if you get this preset and you have your hardware laid out, it shouldn't be terrible to set it in place. But I could easily foresee a scenario, I mean, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have put those damn rails on there yet. And maybe that's what they intended, I don't know. But again, each one of these is part of a modular system. So the instructions are all separate. 
there's not one master instruction if you buy this complete travel trailer kit do this so hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes okay so here we are you can see got the strut brace down here installed I'm gonna order a second talk about that in a minute pretty sturdy this one set screw over here I've got the pipes up just a little high probably not as tight as I could but I think I'm gonna through bolt those instead of a set screw just drill it all the way through and clamp it down good and hard I can get this off after some trimming Obviously unload your bikes, take this loose right here, whole thing folds up flat. I don't think there's a method to travel with it that way. I don't think that would wrap around enough. I'm not sure why you'd want to. If you've got the style of RV that still has the, the flapper here, you pull these two pins, this one here, this one over there, the whole thing folds down. Again, I think they would probably recommend you remove the bike, but hey. Oh, and I've got my one pin a little bit jammed up here. Alright, so I'm going to worry about that later. That was a dumb mistake. But, overall, I am very happy with this. And I will tell you, if you have a Forest River trailer that has the sloping front like this with a fairly short tongue, you will make modifications. In all likelihood, your lift bar brackets will be in the wrong spot, and you'll have to move them forward a little bit. Your battery box will be in the wrong spot and even with as much as I move that one it's still I would have loved to have gone another two three inches but what are you gonna do they recommend one of those if you're doing the three or four bike model I'm gonna get a second I've seen that done the other video I could find out there he had just come off of here. Okay, folks. There she be. Almost done. A few things left I want to do. One, I am going to remove these set screws and through bolt this uh, I'm just gonna feel more comfortable with that and I think it will remove a little bit of the rock I mean there's not much to be fair and being at the tongue rather than the tail of the trailer will help now if you order the 7004 package the four bike kit like this one they tell you that the tongue brace is mandatory. I'm going to tell you for my comfort, I ordered a second one last night so that I can go from here up and then it'll be a true four post. If your setup allowed you to tripod this back to the middle, one would probably be enough, but the shape of these forest rivers, that is not going to happen. You can see I've used every ounce of real estate on this tongue and maintained what I consider to be good clearance. This post, I still need to tighten a few pieces of hardware down, so don't scream about that on the video, I know. But I wanted to try everything out and make sure it was all good. But anyway, I'm comfortable with that clearance, even that top bike. I, had, I put it up a little higher than they show, but it's a, it's a small bike. When Katie grows, I may move that down just a little bit, but I like having that little bit of clearance there. 
All right, so takeaways. The instructions suck. Hopefully this video will, will help just a little bit. Remember, it's modular. You know, the, the rack itself is one module with its own instructions. The post system is one module with its own instructions. This is its own module. Even the fourth bike rail is its own module. So, look for four different instructions. What I would recommend is get your post loosely mounted and don't put these rails on until you've actually got this upright secured in here. Save yourself the weight. You got to get these to 24 inches on center. So depending on where you place it on your A-frame, you're going to be rotating these pieces until you've got exactly 24 inches center to center. Other takeaways. Canadian bikes must be smaller than American bikes for crying out loud. The nice little, they were sheet metal with screws in this groove here. It's supposed to be a tire stop. That bike can't use them. I tried even putting them way out to the edge right here. No dice. Just wouldn't fit. So, yeah. That bit of joking aside, by the time it's all done with that second support, thousand bucks American. Is it worth it? For me, yeah. This is heavy gauge metal. This isn't some lightweight horse crap like you'd find on a pop up tent. Thick flanges, extremely thick wall pipe. And this isn't some lightweight trash. This is heavy gauge metal. These rails are nice formed aluminum. The hardware, in most cases, now I may have installed them in the wrong spots. Now they're on the bike racks up there. Most of the hardware comes with black uh, acorn nut covers. And if you wanted to, you know, do the rest of these, you could. This isn't in threat of hitting anything. But you can see some of them back there. So anyway, yes, it is worth it. That's the company. You can also buy it through, uh, was it, racksforcars.com. Just heavy, heavy-duty metal everywhere. And I don't have to engineer it. If I had the time, material, and energy, yeah, I'm sure I could. And I could weld something up that'd be cool and probably wouldn't move at all. But I like the fact that if I get a new trailer someday, I can take this off. I haven't customized it other than when I drill these holes. That will be a customizing that will kind of dictate where it goes. But in reality, I could drill new holes. So, other thoughts? I haven't towed with it yet. We're going to be heading out in a couple weeks. As long as I don't have an incident where bikes are lost, and God, let's hope that isn't the case, I'm going to say it's a slam dunk win. So, propane tank cover is an issue. I trimmed mine. You can see that. At this height setting, I can get it out of there. I can get the bottles and refill them. If I'm out cruising somewhere, for whatever reason, I need a propane tank off and I don't have those bikes unloaded. I don't want that to be what holds me up. My alternative would be to get a vinyl cover. Maybe someday. With that one, you know, cracks, breaks, wears out, whatever. But for now, I'm, I'm totally happy with it. The other takeaway that I'm going to give you is this is a great time to clean up the tongue of your trailer. Now, mine was only... It's an 18 model, but it was sold in mid-17. So it's got almost four years of weather on it. Well, the tongue did. You can see I went ahead and cleaned it up. Now, yes, I made the cardinal mistake of not measuring my brackets ahead of time. So I've got a little bare area on each side there, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, forest rivers, they mount their batteries pretty far forward. You're probably going to have to move that whole tray back, which means cutting welds on the inside and out and reframing that box. I took that opportunity 
because I wanted double batteries. They make it very difficult on you. With how far forward it is, it's almost impossible from the factory. So I jammed it back as far as I thought I could go, using measurements of about 11 inches of clearance, and you can see I just barely got there, but I did get there. So this is a 27 and a 24 group size battery. Yes, I know. Whatever. I don't want to hear it. That battery, the 27 that came with it, wasn't worn out. I'm not getting rid of it early. If it wears this new 24 out a year early, I don't care. My intention would be to come back with two group 24s when it comes time, and that'll leave enough room. But I modified the tray, used heavier angle iron that I had on hand, and then a piece of that expanded metal. So in reality, I can carry the lift bar you know, lifting tool or, you know, a few little heavy type tools in there that aren't going to be damaged by being left out. But take the time, plan on taking the time to do some modifications and then clean up your tongue, you know, get all that old rust off. It's got primer, paint, clear. It's not going to last forever, but it was a good time to do it. So anyway, I'll update you guys once I've towed with it. As long as I come back with four bikes, call it a success.